One of the most spectacular demonstrations that I think I've ever seen in my entire life is the Rainbow Connection demonstration. It's a beautiful, wonderful, visual, magic show kind of demonstration that really gets kids excited about what's happening in chemistry. We don't have the licensing rights to play the music for you while you're watching the video, but if you get a copy of the song yourself, either by purchasing in a store or downloading it from a legal downloading site, I will cue you at the point that I'm starting the demonstration, and then you can play the music, and I will have the music playing for myself to hear. So you, this will still be sequenced to the demonstration. You can see what it looks like synchronized to the music. I'll cue you by pointing to there when the music starts, and it's going to take 3 minutes and 14 seconds to complete. I'll show you the demonstration first, and then I'll explain how it's set up a little bit later. Ready? Now, there are certain places that I use this in my class. I use it the very first day of school. We only have 15 minute classes at the beginning of our school year on the first day. And the students usually go to every single class, get their list of rules and regulations, and here's how we have our syllabus, and here's the textbook you need to have. And, and to me, that would seem like the most eternally boring thing that could possibly ever happen. And if I want to excite a student about chemistry, the way to do that is not talking about rules on the first day. So what I have lined up is just a barrage of three or four different color-changing demonstrations. This is the one that I end the class with. The song that this goes to plays for 3 minutes and 14 seconds. So I know to look at the clock 3 minutes before the end of the, the hour, and I know to start this demonstration. At the very end of it, 
the kids have seen the most magical thing that they'll probably ever see in their whole lives, and they're going to think chemistry is the awesomest class that they signed up for this entire year. And my kids get so excited about it, they run out talking, and I, I get to the end of the demonstration, I take the bow, and I say, let's have a great year in chemistry, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And they leave with such an exciting emotion for having chemistry as a class that they can't wait to come back the next day. And the next day, I can start to introduce some of the rules, and it's not a big deal. But on that first day, why not capture their imaginations? Now, I do bring this back later in the school year, and I tell my students that you're going to see this demonstration again at the end of the year, because I think it's important to revisit something that you introduce as only magic. And I know that this ha demonstration has a very large impact on my students, because at the end of the year, I give them a course evaluation. I ask them for some of their favorite demonstrations and lab activities and, and course subjects. And this one inevitably always comes up. The rainbow connection just gets lodged in their brain forever. We come to it in the acids base chapter. What you don't see before this demonstration, that is in, in the bottom of each one of these beakers, I put a mixture of indicators. It's a mixture of thymophthalene, phenolphthalene, uh, and there's paranitrophenol, I believe, but I might be pronouncing that wrong. The actual name of the, the reagents that you need are in there. And Flynn also sells a kit of pre-made indicators in little pipettes that you can just drop into each one of the beakers before you start. So you put two or three drops of the acid base indicator inside of the beaker before class begins. Then when you come in, the first thing that happens is you take some of your jug, you pour about 15 to 20 milliliters of an acid, sulfuric acid and ethanol solution. The ethanol will help dissolve the indicator because they're not highly water soluble. And you pour a small amount of acid into each one. You want to make sure you have an opaque desktop because they don't see that there's also a base beaker behind. I use identical jugs, one for acid, one for base. I just label them at the bottom with an A and a B so I know which one it is. Make sure you uncap these before you start, because it's really obvious if all of a sudden you're like, and then you come up with another thing, they've kind of figured out that you've got a different thing back there. But it's absolute magic. So you have some acid in there. You have an acid base indicator. When you start, start pouring the base into the beakers, you pour a small amount, not enough to get past the point where these indicators change color, which is beyond a pH of 7 under basic conditions, but a small splash. They might see a little flash of color, but it doesn't last. Then you pour in enough to develop all the colors the, all the way through. Then you've gone past the equivalence point. So when I get to titrations and talking about acid-base neutralizations during the acid-base chapter, I bring this wonderful demonstration back and I explain all the chemistry behind it. Now I went through with a dropper bottle. This one is sulfuric acid dissolved in glycerin. You don't want the sulfuric acid straight because the color is going to change instantly. So we have sulfuric acid and glycerin. The glycerin is not super soluble as soon as it falls in. And it's not until you agitate it and swirl it that you get the color to go away because now the acid has been dissolved into solution and is dropping the pH lower. You want to make sure that you don't stir in a circle here. This is not the time for cyclone stirring. You want it sloppy and as messy as you can make it. I do suggest a plastic stirring rod as opposed to a glass one because glass against glass has a lot of inertia and you might knock your beaker over. But swirl sloppily as you can to get the solution to go as homogeneous as quickly as possible. Then once all the colors have gone away, you bring back the base beaker and you go back and forth all the way through all the beakers and you fill them all up with base again. The pH has risen above the equivalence point now and we'll get all the colors to develop. At the very end, before you begin this demonstration, you need to put some of the sulfuric acid and glycerin mixture in the bottom of your large beaker or whatever large vessel you're going to use to hold this at the end. Uh, you can use a large plastic pitcher or anything that it doesn't have to be a large glass beaker. And then when you pour them together, now there's more acid in there. The pH is going to lower. We're going to go below the point where the indicators can change color. And everything goes back to colorless. So it's a really beautiful demonstration of an acid-based titration. You haven't even involved a burette. So you can even talk about once you start getting to the concept of titration or acid-based neutralizations, bring this back when you talk about indicators. And you've not only given them a wonderful, spectacular demonstration, but had a very valuable teaching tip that you can use later in the year to get the idea across to students about what's happening. Happening. Now, I also know that the explanation actually disenfranchises some of my students because on their evaluations, one girl actually wrote, um, Rainbow Connection was my favorite demonstration until you ruined it by explaining it. 
Well, I do have to use a demonstration for teaching purposes, um, and I do think that it is important that they know the chemistry behind it, but it's really a wonderful, spectacular demonstration that my kids just keep talking year after year. At the end of my advanced chemistry class, we have about three weeks at the end after the AP exam, and my students get to pick a demonstration under my guidance. They practice, and we perform it for the sixth graders that are in our building and get them hooked on chemistry early on. Uh, inevitably, one student will pick this one. This demonstration takes a large amount of practice if you're going to do it to the music because the music will go at certain times. Now, there are a couple of tricks. One, record the same song over and over on a CD so it just cycles through the rainbow connection. The kids don't actually know it's supposed to end at the end of the song. So if you don't finish it all, you can just keep going through it and they'll, they'll think it's magic because there's this rainbow connection. But you do need to practice if you really want the end of the demonstration to end with the music as well. And when you can get it to happen, it's really one of the most best, the best feelings that I've had as a teacher in front of a whole crowd of kids, been able to get it all to sync right at the same point and the kids just think you're a wonderful magician. It's a beautiful demonstration. I hope you have the opportunity to try it out.